Hello, hello. How you doing today? Uh, welcome back to another Missing Persons uh, case that I'm going to cover today is Jessica Maskers. This is a sad uh, case, as almost every one of these are that I've been doing. Um, she has been missing since 2013, a long, long, long time. Sadly, she was an addict and the police have not really given a lot of information or not information um let me say they've not really taken it seriously because she was an addict and y'all know if y'all watch any of my other videos i have a lot of videos of people that are missing that are addicts um and I was an addict, and if I would have been missing, trust me, nobody would have looked for me. Probably not even my family. So these are some of the cases that really, really get to me because her family is looking for her. She's a huge family, and they actually are very invested in finding Jessica. And so um, I just wanted to do my little, you know, my little part, even though... I don't get a lot of traction on a lot of my videos. I don't get a lot of views, but that's okay. I'm still going to keep doing them. By the way, all this information I get off the internet is collected, like I said, off the internet. You can do it too, just like I always say. It's for entertainment purposes only. And sometimes I voice my opinion about things. Um, I try to stick to the facts and only the facts that I find on the internet. But sometimes I do throw my, and I do look like a hot mess today, but okay. All right, it's hot. It's hot, you guys. It is really hot. I'm sure it's hot where you are. It seems to be hot every damn where. So I have some uh, vitamin water here and I have a diet cherry Coke. So that's what I'm drinking. Still lay on <laughs> Um, let's get right into this. First of all, I'm just going to, this is one of the missing persons, uh, posters. Uh, she was last seen, um, in, uh, 2013. She's 5'2", 98 pounds. Uh, she was 24 years old. She was in an abusive relationship with a guy. She was also an addict and she had recently had a, um, an overdose. I believe the day before she went missing. Um, and she was also beat to hell by her abusive boyfriend a few days prior to her um, uh, disappearance. And he was arrested and charged, charged and convicted even though she was not there to testify. So, and from what I gather from the reports that I've read online, he beat, he beat her pretty good. So that comes with, you know, sometimes these abusive relationships, they just come with um, a man sometimes that, uh, with habits and all that shit, unfortunately. And I know when I speak of things like this, it's because I know I lived it for a decade and it uh, sucks. And like I said, if I went missing, I promise you nobody, I've said this in many, many videos, y'all can go look. Nobody would have looked for me. I guarantee you that. Um, they just wouldn't have. Here we go. Let's go to the Charlie Project. Just real get the information about her. She went missing on April 15th of 2013 from Indianapolis, Indiana. I actually did do a YouTube short on this so you can check it out. Um, I did it like a month ago. Obviously, she's a white female. She would be 34 years old. Lots of pretty, beautiful pictures of her. Um, yeah. She was wearing a red and black plaid jacket, fur trimmed hood, blue jeans, and a pink and gray, pink and gray sneakers. She also had a couple of kids. She just had given birth, by the way. She. I don't know if I know the exact time, but she had just given birth, and I believe the baby was still in the hospital. Now, if I'm not getting that straight, feel free to put that in the comments. But she had just given birth, and her baby was a premature baby, and I know he was in the hospital, and I'm, I, I've read, we'll read it together when we get over there. I believe the baby was still in the hospital when she disappeared. 
Um, so she is a Caucasian female uh, with brown hair, hazel eyes. Uh, she has tattooed tattoos all over there's pictures of it there um you can just go and check that out i'll leave links so her nicknames are jess and jesse pretty pretty girl and young 24 years old and a mother too let's not forget that and also can i say this too i know some people say things like you know she's an addict and stuff like that she had been to rehab three times she was trying to get herself together that's how it works usually listen i had i don't like to talk about it uh, too much but i had a baby too right in the middle or right at the beginning uh you know of um an addiction and uh you think you you want you want you want to be like the you want to, in your head and in your heart and everything, you want to be better. You want to be off drugs. You don't want to be, a, obviously, nobody wants to be a drug addict. Nobody wants to not take care of their kids, um, babies, children, whatever. So, um, she was trying to get better. She was trying to get better. If anybody goes to rehab three times, that means they're trying. They want to get better. They don't, don't want to. There are people out there that want to live that life. This is not one of those cases. But there are some questions whether she possibly overdosed. And that was originally what the police had thought or were saying that, you know, she's, she possibly overdosed. And, uh, you know, doesn't mean that it's a murder. But, uh, yeah, if she overdosed, where's she at? Who hid the body? Uh, even if she overdosed, you know. Where is she? Um, just a little bit. Okay, let's go. I'll do this. This may be repetitive a little bit. But Jessica was last seen in the 2100 block of Napoleon Street in Indianapolis, Indiana on April 15th. The day before, she had been involuntarily com committed to a hospital after possibly taking a drug overdose. Now, in a, a um, another uh, article that we're going to read, uh, it says that she was in the hospital. I don't know whether she was in, I, that because she had an overdose, but she was immediately uh, discharged the same day, I believe. Um, after checking out the hospital, she went to stay with her cousin. She left the residence after an argument at 4.30 a.m. <sighs> she had said that her uh, some guys over there were making her feel uncomfortable and um so she walked to a gas station um excuse me uh, now this right here says this is uh, now see i don't really this says uh that she went to this gas station to meet up with a boyfriend and she was never seen from again but then in a, in a recent article that we're going to go look at it does not say that that's not what is said but um we'll go over that uh maskers jessica call her, i'm gonna call her by her name jessica had, been, had given birth to a baby boy her second child two months before her disappearance the baby was born drug dependent and premature and was still in the neonatal I see you. His mother had been visiting regularly. And this is in the article also that we're about to go over. That she was up there all the time. She was calling all the time. Uh, she also is constantly in contact with her mother. Also, she has, I believe, eight or nine brothers and sisters. She has a huge family. It's hard to... I don't have a huge family, but I can imagine it's hard to disappear from... <laughs> that many brothers and sisters i can only imagine and they're very active in her case um then this just tells prior to her disappearance she dropped out of school worked as an exotic dancer um in spite of her drug addiction and her lifestyle she, her loved ones said she, it would be uncharacteristic of her to be out of touch with them i have to tend to agree i mean even if you do get off in left field go off on a binge 
you always come back to what you know. And if she has eight or nine brothers and sisters, trust me, she's going. And that means cousins, uncles, aunts. She's got a huge network. Those are the people we're going to go back to. I didn't even have a huge network, but I always went back to my mom. The one person that I knew I could go to when, you know, I, I needed somebody, really needed a, so anybody. If I had nine brothers and sisters, cousins, what, however many cousins, uncles, so like that, I would, that would be your, go, that's your go-to when you're an addict. You go to back to the people uh, that you know. Especially, like, once you come off the binge, you're like, oh, shit, and you want to get back to your normal self, you go back to your people. You don't just banish, period. Um, I know I'm focusing on that, but I, I'm focusing on the addiction and drug thing because that's why her case was never taken serious. Um, just here's a very good point, too. Just days before her disappearance, Jessica had been hospitalized. Hospitalized. Okay, that's not, that's a serious beating. After her boyfriend assaulted her, he was arrested for battery. Mask and her family stated the boyfriend regularly physically beat her and had broken multiple bones. So this is a, and I uh, gave her drugs. This is a wife beater, a beater, beater, beater. If you break a bitch's bones... Yeah, and I'm how I am, y'all. If anybody watches this shit, uh, y'all know I'm blunt. He was questioned. This this right here gets on my nerves. He was questioned by police after Jessica's disappearance. He said that he does not know what happened to her, but the detectives who interviewed him also believes he knows more about her disappearance than he said. Many potential witnesses in the case are involved in the drug culture and have not been cooperative with the police, which is stupid. You could be in a drug culture and still tell... tell. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Different people, different, different people work, do their drugs different ways. Although police stated there's no evidence of foul play in her disappearance, this also gets me. Her family believes she was abducted, possibly by someone she knew. The police believe she. The police also believe she's deceased, and her her case remains unsolved. So that is the basics of Jessica Masker's. Uh, her family still has hope that uh, she possibly might be alive. You never know. Here's a pretty picture. I have some pictures of her right here. It's pretty 24 years old. 24 years old. You know, yeah, we all make mistakes. You know, the drug. I love this picture. Look at her. Just got a little attitude, you can tell. Just a sweetie. I mean, I don't know. I, I have a I have a soft place in my heart for uh this right here. People like this who get forgetting by the forgotten by the police um i'm going to uh da, 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 da. we so i do have a, another ad i'm just gonna share this ad i'm um, not ad <laughs> not ad um article this is the indianapolis here we go i believe this is the indie star this is actually from August 14th of 2020, April 14th. So this is literally a couple months ago. All right, let me get this up for y'all. Right. Here we go. Sorry. Um, and this is her family is so this is I love this family so much. They are so about finding her. Still, even this long, this is what is this? I love it. 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 Um, like I said, she just given birth. Okay, where's the part? Okay, da, 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 da. okay. Um, I love how the family said uh, the missing woman family knows Jessica Maskers made mistakes and suspect her. History of drug abuse played a role on how serious they took her case. Of course. Oh, no. Look at that. 
That's exactly what they do. That's exactly what they do. You can go scroll through many of my videos and I, and most of them, this is a, one, a very strong point. So I'm going to do this. I know and uh, that I don't get a lot of views. Maybe share this, maybe help out. Um, Here's another good quote. People will say she overdosed. This is what her sister says. If that's the case, then somebody would have found her body. Where is she going to overdose on drugs that nobody's ever going to find her body? Amen. 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 If she did overdose and somebody got rid of her body, okay, that's a crime. That's a crime. Okay. And maybe it won't be a crime now. Maybe if you go to somebody and say, okay, I'm sorry. Or, you know, yeah, a lot of that, that has happened. A matter of fact, that happened in the, uh, her name is Houston. What was her first name? It was, uh, I think, in 2019. Uh, and she actually went to a club. She went and did some drugs. And she overdosed. Beautiful girl. Uh, I did a video about her. And... Uh, Nobody got charged with that. The guy was caught by leaving her body in a um, a house. And from what we uh, I remember, he never got any charges, which is weird. But she did overdose. And if that's the case, okay, fine. Um, so let me see. They have birthday parties. They have uh, all kinds of things. Um, so April fifteenth of twenty thirteen. Uh, here's another point. We knew something was wrong. Um, we kept trying to call her and nobody seen or heard from her. Before her disappearance, it was never difficult to get in touch with Jessica. She just vanished. After giving birth to her second son prematurely, she visited the baby at the hospital almost every day. She shared music videos on her Facebook page. Often she would spend so much time making phone calls, she ran out of minutes on her phone each month. Remember back in the day, you had to pay for minutes. Uh, Jessica lived with her mother and made sure to call if she was going to be away from home longer than expected. That's really nice. Um... The day before she went missing, here's this, here it is right here, this is it. The day before that she went missing, Jessica was hospitalized because of, of a prescription overdose. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> it doesn't say whether she was, I mean, if she had an overdose, I guess that's involuntary. You go run somebody up there. I don't know what drugs I'm I, I can assume, but I'm not going to. Um, she was picked up in the hospital by her aunt and brought to her cousin's home. <clears throat> and this is where everything went down, like I said. And I've already told you the story about how she uh, she left. She called her brother. Her brother couldn't pick her up uh, from this gas station. Then uh, here she was captured on surveillance video inside this gas station then walking away her mother said <clears throat> so it's possible that she did call her boyfriend family members believe the last person that jessica called before her disappearance was her boyfriend or ex-boyfriend the man later convicted of domestic violence, uh, battery for beating jessica <laughs> just days before her disappearance so they believe so uh i don't know if it's a fact uh that they know it's proved 100 percent. i mean if she called from a payphone who i don't i don't guess they could i don't know um i could have swore i think i might be just uh, maybe i'm wrong could have swore i read somewhere that they saw okay i'm not gonna say that <laughs> i think i'm wrong um like I said, and here's evidence against the boyfriend from the paramedic and forensic nurse after beating her was strong enough to convict him without her testimony. So, yeah, she was beat. He was, here's, I love this statement. Here we go. This is from her sister. He was controlling and obsessive. He wasn't a good guy. He called us back and said he could not find her, period. That's it. And that's the last phone call that they ever got from him. 
He never called again after that for a man who was obsessively calling my daughter. That's very unusual. I'm sorry. I think, yeah. 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 And an obsessed guy looking for his person he's obsessed over doesn't just, just suddenly stop. So, yeah. So, y'all uh, check out. I hope y'all will uh, share this video. I hope that you will check out. I'll leave the links down there for y'all. Um, this is ridiculous. Got her. Pretty girl. There she is. 24 years old. 2013. Okay. Jessica Maskers, 2013. 95 pounds. Um. Here is the phone number, I believe. Also, there is a, I believe, a $10,000 reward. A reward. There's a reward. So, it's been long enough. Somebody should come forward. Somebody should say, hey, yeah, I know what happened. Just say it. Who gives a shit? And a lot of you people that know about this might be in recovery now. And if you are, then you might should go ahead and tell somebody. Um, tell your sponsor. Tell a friend. Tell somebody who's in recovery, too. And get this out. That's that that's that would be amazing if you did that. Um, and help this family. There's tips right there. There is a big reward. If you need some money, there you go. You get a reward. Just do it. Somebody help. Please share this video. I don't get any views. I know nobody's probably here. This is 21 minutes later. But, hey, share this video. I don't get any views. I'm going to share it on some places, and I'm going to send it to the family. Hopefully, it's a good video. I do the best I can. I don't have a big production. I'm not a big YouTuber, but I do the best I can to try to pay it forward for everybody who is missing or anybody that I can get enough information about. So, so. Um, I appreciate y'all watching and sharing and liking and all that good YouTube stuff. So, y'all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.